It's time for Declare Your Independence with Ernest Hancock. Believe me when I say we have a difficult time ahead of us. But if we are to be prepared for it, we must first shed our fear of it. I stand here without fear because I remember. I remember that I am here not because of the path that lies before me, but because of the path that lies behind me. I remember that for 100 years we have fought these machines. And after a century of war, I remember that which matters most. We are still here! to declare your independence of me, Ernest Hancock, here in Phoenix, Arizona. Hey, here we got the, we got this mic. Ooh, got the microphone. There we go. Okay. This is what I want to make sure that uh, we get to. We're, go- we're going to be talking with Greg, and uh, I-, I want to share some information with you. As we raised our children together, you know, they were growing up the same age, you know, some a little younger, some a little older, uh, you know, and how we seeded the next generation of y'all. That was our goal. Now, I want to, I you know, as we, Sierra's loading up some artwork that one of his daughters does, and we're going to be featuring in the magazine. There is a generation to generation to generation that's been going on for a long time. A lot of the revolutionaries now don't really have the, I mean, how would they know? They don't, they don't know that uh, a lot of times that a lot of them that are out there, um, they don't know the, the the young person that's 22 sitting next to them had two generations before of libertarian, anarchist, uh, freedom, loving, supporting parents and grandparents that have been behind a lot of the stuff. In fact, a lot of the money that went into the revolution were these people. You know, and, and to give you a good example, I always focus on, you know, things like space travel and all that kind of stuff because we were inspired as young people. Elon Musk, PayPal, you know, he did that to make the money so he could go to Mars. I mean, that's how big the envelope is. They're going, well, you know, so you could what? You got something bigger? I mean, you know what? I mean, seriously, in his lifetime, go to Mars. Here we go. So I'm just, I, I, I want to inspire you guys. Now, one of the places that, that manifests itself is you have these little uh, tablet books. I'm holding it up. I got the, uh, the Zoom here, and I just push the button, okay? I push this on from a dead start. It goes up. Within 10 seconds, this thing's going to be up. Microsucks can kiss my butt, man. <laughs> I've just, I've so had my, 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 oh, my fill of Microsoft stuff. Every time I turn around, you know, there's always something. So this is a whole different philosophy. It's going to where we have the uh, ability for people to be able to create their own apps that are available online. Now, the problem is, is that it's getting to where there are so many that you have. So here we're booted up. And I go like this, you know, security, you can see my security thing. And, you know, boom, I'm up. That's it. Done. Push buttons, get apps, do whatever, you know, go and go and go and go and go and mine. Now, <clears throat> I want to show you something here. Those of you that are on, Google streamlines Android market. This is what the problem has been. There's so much stuff coming out. When you got billions of people on a planet and millions of them able to do uh, all kinds of create in many different languages, but math and coding, a lot of it, you know, same language. I mean, you know, here's the language. Go make it go work. Well, what they're doing is I remember when uh, Yahoo came out. When Yahoo first started, imagine this in the mid-90s, you already started having, you know, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of web pages. How in the heck did you find anything? In 1994, I think it was, around in there, 94, 95, all of a sudden there was a couple of students, they go, hey, man, we just go out on the internet, and we'll find and get and do and kind of do Yahoo. Yahoo! I mean, it just came out from out of the blue. These guys riding around in their Toyota Tercels, you know, and they, all of a sudden, some venture capitalist goes, uh, uh, want to be rich? <laughs> Here we go. 
I remember Mike Duggar, an activist, he started creating websites for a lot of different activist things that we did. Now, this is back when we had 2,400 baud modem kind of thing. Ooh, I got a 14.4 or 9 or whatever it was. You know, yeah, we're on big dial-up. So what we would do, <clears throat> our sites would be very simple, not a lot of graphics. You know, sometimes you have a picture or two to make a point, but a lot of it was all text and how you organize it. Did a great job. It loaded fast, and he got, you know, some award, the five top 5% five or five top five uh you know, all kinds of awards he'd get and so on because it was effective. We made it in some books. You know, Claire Wolf would write about us and 101 Things to Do to the Revolution and different things that we did and all this kind of stuff. So we're going, yeah, this internet thing, man, this is yeehaw. I still get, you know, calls based on this stuff that we've done back in the day. So we go, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. How do you find us? How do Second Amendment advocates or freedom advocates, how do they find us? How do they even know that we exist? Yahoo. Well, this search engine wars started. This became a big, but then you had to have something to even, you know, look at the page. You know, what, what, that's where Napster came from. You know, here comes Napster. You had, not Napster. Uh, yeah, it was Napster, right? Mozilla, you know, back in the day. Anyway, it was a browser, okay? So Netscape, Netscape, that's what it was, Netscape. So Netscape came out, and we were able to, you know, look at web pages. Okay, here we go. This is, all has a genesis. We were you guys. What happened is that it started to explode and we could see how do you search it? Well, now with the applications, we did our silver calculator for Android and iPhone and BlackBerry when we're doing the silver dime thing. Within a week, it was available to download onto my Droid. Okay, I got a Droid X here. I go like this. I just put it up. Get to the menu screen. I'll hold this up for you guys. Boom, there it is. Okay, right here. I push the button and it comes up. Wait a minute. I push the button right there. I push the button. Boom, it's up. And I just, you know, I put in how many dimes I'm doing in a transaction. How much? Done. This is what now, how do we find this stuff? How do we get it? Well, that's what this article is about. What they're saying is the biggest problem we have in the market is discovery, said Michael Novak, Android engineer for GroupMe.com in an interview. Google has definitely heard the complaints from people like me and these new features being rolled out are proof. Navigability, whatever, navigability issues have plagued Google's app shopping system on the consumer end, making it hard for people to find the apps they want or even to realize that there are apps they might be interested in. For their part, developers have complained that it's easier to make money in Apple's app store than it is in the Android market. Oh my goodness, man, I can't have that. For consumers, finding the most popular apps may get easier with one of the many new lists Google has added, each detailing the top performing apps in specific categories. The Twitter-esque top trending list for Example highlights the most downloaded apps over the past seven days. If an app continues to be among the highest downloaded over the seven day period, it will move into either the top paid or top free list, which cover popularity over a 30 day period. And it goes on. Now, the reason I bring this up, I am not the techno geeky guy, but I've been from the beginning as a user of how to use the internet to communicate to people the information that, in my opinion, we should all know. Let me tell you what it is. Uh, the truth. How about the truth? Give me the truth thing. So we are on the, always have been, on the edge of technology with Freedoms Phoenix and a lot of other stuff that we've done. Here comes the magazine. The magazine, there's going to be a request by me to the listeners of the show, readers of Freedoms Phoenix. When the time comes, we're going to do our best to get this trended up, to make sure that, you know, here we are. So we're getting all of the stuff ready. And when we're ready to pull the trigger, we got a big head start on a lot of people because they just released the software a few days ago. And now we're, we're, we're getting it all done. You know, Nick, Jeff, everybody, Sierra, they're all putting it together. Get, woo, and then we pull the trigger on all the authors say, okay, submit now. And when that happens, I'm going to need you guys to pay attention to this and promote it because it is the future along with all the other tapestry of all of our work that we'll use it to promote you. They'll be able to find you. 
Officers are going to know we're there.